This is the Buchla Music Easel, also known as the Model 208C, and it's the latest product from Buchla USA. What it is, as many know, an iteration of the famed Buchla Music Easel. Uh, but unlike the original Easel, it does not have the controller at the bottom. But it also has several features that make it a little bit more modern and easy to integrate in your studio, and adds a few more patch points than the original did or the uh, revamped version of the Music Easel from 2013. So one of the really wonderful features is the optional USB host. And that's what we're going to talk about today because that makes it so that you can just plug the Sensil Morph into the Buchla Music Easel and start using it as a controller. Though there are some things to know. How do you make it interesting? Out of the box, but Buchla Thunder Overlay will send MPE data. The easel does not respond to that, so we do need to do some reprogramming. You can download the easel command mapping from our forums or from our guide. You'll get the Sensil map file as well as some documentation showing what the mapping does. In the Sensil app, you'll want to go to the top right and import Sensil map. And then you can load the easel command by sending the map to Morph. You can unplug it from your computer then plug it into the back of the music easel into the USB host port. What it does respond to is standard notes on channel 1. It will also respond to notes on 2 and 3, channels 2 and 3. We'll get to that later. Uh, it responds to the mod wheel or CC1, and that's what we have going to the vertical. And it also responds to channel aftertouch, so all of our pressure gestures on here. And then there's a few other CCs and notes that do some interesting things. So let's first take a look at something you've already heard, and that was the vertical gesture. What we're doing there is moving this slider. Um, it is the timbre slider. So whenever we move vertically on the thunder, we're doing the same thing that this slider is doing, though we have a little bit of a different range. You can see normally this is not sort of an additive feature. So. Even when we max out the timbre, we still have a little bit of room to change the sound. We can um, also use the pressure. So pressure comes out at all of the purple jacks, and we can map those to whatever we like. Um, in this case, we might want to map pressure to the modulation oscillator. Um, there's a couple ways we can affect this modulation oscillator, but first we'll try pressure. So we'll patch in from the purple to this blackjack, and the blackjack is a receiver for modulation. And now we have mapped pressure to the modulation oscillator. And it does nothing. That's because we need to turn up the amount of the pressure that's going to affect the modulation. And again, it's additive. So when this is all the way up, our full pressure range is going to do the equivalent of moving that slider up and down. Let me change it to a high resolution and all right so now we've got two dimensions of sound control and of course we also have pitch bend so right now the pitch bend is very low so it's giving a little bit of slight pitch bend and detuning when we move left and right. Uh, we can actually change that with CCs. So if I change the preset to 5, I have some things mapped here. Um, the pitch bend range is here, so we can actually hear that. So this is going to be maximum pitch bend range. And as I move this slider down, it's going to lessen that bend that I go on the left and right. Okay, so now we have a couple basics. I'm going to send that pitch bend up maybe about midway and go back to uh, preset 1. And now we can also map velocity. Velocity um, comes from something that is similar to pressure, I suppose, and that's actually from the from card jack here. And you can learn this from... 
uh, looking at the documentation for MIDI implementation from the Buchla site. So now we can patch velocity into something else. Um, we can attach it to say, I don't know, let's try the modulation frequency. And this is probably best heard at lower ranges. So uh, we can turn on the delay. And I'm going to unpatch this so we can keep it constant. Now we have that sort of tremolo effect. We have the wave shape at a triangle and kind of a slow oscillation. And now we'll turn up the velocity effect on the frequency. So the lighter I tap it, the slower it is. Let me go ahead and bottom out the frequency a little bit more. So that's a light tap, and that's a hard tap. So already we're getting a lot of timbral fluctuations going on here just by these simple mappings. Now, of course, we can make these patches much more complex and add velocity to different patch points. Um, all the patch cords that the Buchla comes with are stackable. So it's very easy to add velocity to, uh, for example, the pitch. This might be kind of unusual. It's almost random because it's kind of hard to really match a pitch to a particular velocity and uh, and so on. So you can start to gang these uh, patch cords up and get more complicated uh, patches going on. Um, as you can see here, I have this patch. This is simply um, triggering the envelope generator. Now, there's a lot of switches here that are for in the wrong place. Your thunder will not work. So the first thing you want to make sure of is that the keyboard switches, you'll find them in um, many of these different areas. We can set those to on or off. The modulation oscillator, I'm controlling that with the velocity, so I'm not using the keyboard notes. So that's off. The complex oscillator that's providing the voice is on. We turn that off. We'll get a trigger, but we don't control the frequency with our uh, touches. Similarly, the envelope generator, um, if that's being driven by the pulsar, it's just going to trigger with the yellow pulsar, so we can change that envelope. And if you're not familiar with Buchla, uh, it's kind of unusual compared to many synthesizers. The tall value or the high value is uh, a small amount, and if you want longer or higher values, they are uh, down low, so a high, long attack and long decay are going to be down, and percussive sounds are up. And we can drive that with the pulsar. Now if we wanted to, we could take um, pressure and map that to To the, the speed of this. Sort of boring as it is, but with a more complicated patch, it gets kind of interesting. Um, the other th thing we want to we can do is we can drive it with the sequencer, with the pulse sequencer here. But the important thing to notice is that our envelope is no longer being driven by keyboard touches. That needs to be in the keyboard position for that. And similarly, we can use this envelope generator. Um, there's a few different modes. Right now, it's acting as a low-pass filter. So we're getting kind of a dull tone when this is low, and we don't have the envelope. Uh, it's not going as a high frequency. Now it will go to a higher frequency and get brighter sounds. And I filtered everything out. Um, and now it can act also as just a VCA. So instead of affecting the brightness, 
it's affecting the volume. And similarly, we can do a, a combination. So both of these gates operate the same way. I tend to like to leave them in the low pass filter uh, position. Now we can add in the modulation oscillator. So if we turn that to keyboard, now we're controlling the frequency of this with our note presses. And uh, we'll put that on high frequency so it's audible. And now we'll turn, we'll just go ahead and patch the envelope orange to the amount of gate two. And I move up and down and nothing's happening because we're not listening to the complex oscillator, we're just listening to the modulation. We can bring in some cross modulation though. If we take our tiny jacks, we can get the complex oscillator output and modulate the frequency and adjust it with that. So now we have some adjustments there. And now we can, of course, uh, mix these two things and fire them off. dramatically change the sound just with a couple little changes in our uh, switches. And what other things can we get from this? Um, so besides the note and the velocity and the pitch bend, we can use some of these switches up here. These are mapped to some very low notes. Uh, notes, uh, I think, 0 to 2, 3 to 5, 6 to 9... 10 to 12 maybe, um, doesn't matter, it's in the map. We can use that to trigger some of these different pieces here. So uh, this play button will advance the sequencer. So you can see the light here is moving forward. Uh, let's go ahead and map the sequencer to something interesting such as um, the oscillator pitch. And that's maybe a bit dramatic. So by holding down a note, I set a bass pitch, and then I can step through the sequencer values that are set with these levers. And then the, uh, the stop button here, the square, is uh, a random trigger. So as I press that, you can see this little white light light changing its uh, brightness and that's a random value comes out the white jacks here so we can apply that to <laughs> a random can go to uh, let's do something simple that we can understand easily and we'll put that at the frequency of the modulation oscillator bring that into view a little bit more so you can see the key presses and we'll bring up the uh, complex oscillator and suddenly we have the sound of computing um, and so that's just by holding down one of these to provide timbre control and stepping through the stepper and changing the random voltage amount. And then the next one we have is the envelope generator, which is kind of interesting. We can hold down a note and uh, trigger the envelope. You can see the... So it kind of acts as the last note triggered and make, make that a little bit shorter. And 
so that is another feature of these. And it's kind of an interesting way to play it um, rather than, you know, this really the same as doing. I could go and kind of double it up. So one is kind of like the rhythm and the other one is the note selection. And finally, we have the uh, pulser step. So it's the same as this one button here. And we can attach the pulser. Let's just use the pulser as an envelope. And we can attach the pulser to, uh, let's say, the modulation. We can hear that. Um, and now it's being triggered by itself. Uh, we'll put it on sequencer and now we can just pulse it by hitting that button. And if we turn the keyboard off, and we can do that in combination with the uh, random voltage that we have modifying its pitch. So. So there's all kinds of interesting ways to play, and on their own, some of these things maybe don't seem all that exciting. Um, but when you combine them all into one performance, you really get a lot of expressive control from this uh, surface rather than uh, trying to interact with it, say, with a keyboard, which you can't, you can't do these things with a keyboard. Um, and similarly, running it from a sequencer or a computer is just a very different sound. Some of the other controls we have on the Thunder for the easel, uh, we have these hex pads. This bottom left one is just set to a low bass note, giving you the same parameters you have on these other ones, but just in a different shape. And then on the right, we have that set to control the modulation slider and the timbre slider simultaneously. So if I hold a note, it gives us it gives us some timbral space to explore there. Um, and then on these top buttons, we have the octave shift. And then we have the controls here for, again, modulation amount and timbre on pressure. So it's just a different way to control them. The other nice thing is that they act as resets. So if you have this and kind of a crazy space, you can reset the modulation amount and the timbre uh, at the same time. So normally you can control timbre that way, but it's nice to be able to have another secondary control using a different gesture. And for the modulation amount, again, it's also nice to be able to just kind of bring that in as you like. The other advantage of having the timbre separate from this is if you have a long decay and you trigger a note you can use that pressure to modify the timbre as it decays out so that covers most of the features that you can explore with the Bukla Thunder overlay and the USB host input on the music easel so I think there's a lot of places to explore uh, sound and composition with this, and it gives you a really hands-on experience uh, that you can't get with really any other type of controller. I look forward to seeing what you folks create with your easel and your Sensil Morph.